Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here, back with another Capture One tutorial. And today we're going to talk about watermarking. So I have a couple different strategies toward watermarking, and I thought I would share them with you because I've gotten a bit efficient with it over the years, and I wanted to kind of update you as to how I use this versus Lightroom. Uh, so in Lightroom, which I no longer even have installed, you have to have a watermark for each location, and then each color, each size, and so on, and it's just completely painful. Uh, Capture One does it a pretty sexy way, each process recipe can have a watermark enabled. So example, I have one here for my portfolio and I have inside the process recipe, I have watermark. And then here you have a preview of your watermark and then the file. So in my files, I have all of my watermarks kind of kept in a single area and I have my uh, Photoshop bases in here in case I need to make new ones later. So I have a boudoir brand, my regular brand, and then my high school senior brand, because different people can't figure out that you do all these things, so I do them independently with different brands. What you would do is select the one you would like and hit open. And I already have this one set to my portfolio, and you see here if I grab this little hand and click on it, I can move it around. Any items that are exported with this process, process recipe during this selection process will have the same watermark and the same location. So if I select both of these, for example, you can see that they will update automatically as I move this around. They all update to the same location. So if you have multiple images and you want to export them in different locations, just export one, click on the next one, move it, export it, and so on. The export processor in Capture One will go ahead and queue them into the process queue, which is this thing, and it'll just handle them in the order in which you did them. You don't have to wait for it to finish, so you can pound out a bunch of them very quickly. Now, my other brands, rather than swapping the watermark each time I need a different thing, for example, this is obviously a boudoir image, and I'm going to want to uh, use my boudoir brand on it, I would go ahead and select the watermark. But I don't want to do that each time. Uh, I want to have it kind of, I don't know, I'm, I'm lazy, so I want to go ahead and do it for me. So I'll just go ahead and select this, and you see that it changes to my boudoir brand and then I can adjust the opacity and so on. I normally have a black and white version of each watermark. I used to have a tan one as well, depending on what I was doing. I wish blending modes were a thing with watermarks. I think that would be pretty cool, uh, but it's not. Uh, so I go ahead and move this to where I want. The other thing this process recipe does is that it drops it into a different location inside of my Dropbox folder. It puts it into a boudoir subfolder and then labels it accordingly. So all of my boudoir work goes in a, spe a specific portfolio for boudoir and not into the other things. Same with the high school senior stuff. Uh, that's down here under client social media senior. So this one exports with the social media senior logo on it that the social media people can use and share and you know all that other stuff that they do. <laughs> and uh, we have our branding and so on. Now, note that a watermark, just simple, I just got to say this, a watermark is not any sort of legal protection. It doesn't do anything for you. I call these my brands and not so much a watermark because I want people to see who made it. And I don't really make it in such a way that if you really wanted to, it wouldn't be that hard to remove it. Uh, but I do file all of my images with the Library of Congress. So if someone was so daring as to do so, then they're going to have a large legal battle in front of them. Um, I might actually do a separate video on copywriting because copywriting is a, a thing that's just so full of urban myths and legends that it's hard to tell what really is or isn't true. And I've done a lot with it and I have quite a few cases because I actually pursue people that use my images in a commercial way. So it's uh, something I might actually make a video on. I just thought I would touch on how watermarks are used inside of Capture One and how each process recipe can remember them. And to be lazy, again, I set up separate recipes for each one. And I could export both of these simultaneously. So if I want to export my, my one to my regular portfolio and one to my boudoir portfolio, I can just hit process and this image will go out and be placed in both of those folders ready to be consumed by whoever's on the other end of that Dropbox. So just a quick video today on process recipes for watermarking. I know a few people have asked about it. Oh, one more thing I almost forgot to mention. Make sure that you have your metadata for your copyright information included in your uh, export. So when these JPEGs are created, that will be in the metadata and available for anyone who would like to license your image. That way, if you're going to the trouble of watermarking to protect yourself, you might as well give them information in case they'd actually like to purchase the image. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and I will catch you next time.